All right, welcome to the first episode of Hazer Reviews Famous Instagram Photographers. The uh, topic today is Murad Osman. You'd know him from the Follow Me Too project. He is uh, known best for these kind of images where uh, his wife is the model and he's the photographer and she's holding his hand. All right, so I'm gonna do a few different categories of his images. We're gonna start off with beautifully done. These are images that I really like. I wanna start it off on a good note, and then we'll jump into Miss the Mark. These are gonna be images that uh, are not quite as beautifully done, we'll say. Uh, then I wanna go on to The Strange. These are some images that to me kind of stood out or were a little different than his standard stuff. And then we're gonna wrap up with The Grand uh, to keep it kind of going out of the video on a high note. So let's jump right into it. He works with his wife, Natalie Osman. Uh, she is fantastic with her outfit choices. Uh, I don't know if she's doing them all herself or what's going on, but the attention to detail is fantastic throughout them, uh, right down to the jewelry. And some, in some cases, the ones that really, really hit, everything is just on point. His jewelry, her jewelry, her outfits, and the landscape. This is one of those. I think the horizon being a little bit diagonal just technically pulls me out a little bit, looking at this image a little bit more. That's the goal with this group is to spend a little bit more time on images that I would have quickly just flipped through on Instagram and made kind of a snap judgment. So this one I really like. I love the tones. I think everything matches really nice. I like that the little pop of color up here uh, is the only thing really off that warm color tone. And uh, I think that it it's done really nicely. I like her jewelry. I like his bracelet combo. I like the uh, the rocks on the shore here and even the building up in the corner. On to the next, beautifully done. So this one I really, really love, but there's one little problem with it for me. Uh, I loved this image when I saw it smaller and then seeing it on the bigger screen, the watch face is all I can look at. Uh, I don't know if it's the fact, no, I think it's the fact that you know, his arm leads up to a watch face, her arm leads back to a watch face. For some reason with jewelry, it doesn't stop me, but there's something about the face of a watch that does. And so now with this image, that's all I can ever focus on. This one, I really, really like the way that they did the pink and blue. Um, in some images, she's, you know, the building or the, the subject in front of her is just really imposing. Um, and I'm glad to see that he didn't do a big building that would have taken up a lot of this space in here. He would kind of let it have room to breathe and the architecture still kind of shows through and I think it's beautifully done. I like the the dress, the flowing of it, uh, you know, even down to the petals. I think this image was a really, really well done image. I really love this image. The white on white is awesomely done. The dividers here are fantastic pieces of architecture. So I love the background, I love the building, and I think that her outfit complements it really, really well. It doesn't, it's not so loud it takes away, and it's not so perfect that it matches. I think if she picked lace or something that was similar to these patterns, I think it could have uh, kind of had a separation issue, which I think that that's not a problem in this photo whatsoever, and I really, really like it. Okay, so this one, there's a whole category that they do that's kind of almost more tiptoeing along these fantasy scenes. Uh, sometimes it goes way too far in the photoshopping side, which you'll see in the future. Uh, and I really, really don't like some of those images. This one I think is beautifully done. Uh, there's another comparison down the road with a boat in the background, which I think uh, pulls me out of the image and I'll make a note on that one when we get there. But uh, yeah, I like the, the tree border on this. I like her, her situation in the scene. The colors are, are okay. This one is one of my favorites. Uh, I think it's beautifully done. I think that adding the teapot in here um, really, really kind of sets you in a space where you don't know what's photoshopped in this image and what isn't. If you didn't have the tea shop or the teapot, I think that uh, you would assume that it's all kind of real and it'd be like a little bit warped or a little bit weird and kind of just, just not disturbing, but hard to pinpoint. And I think when you add that little flair of like, obviously this wasn't real, that it makes you start to question and think a little deeper on, on what is real and what isn't real in the image. And I have a really hard time like just looking at it uh, without like zooming in and seeing if there's an edge that doesn't match or something. I have a hard time being like, yeah, this is Photoshop, this isn't. So 
I think it's a really successful image and I think it's perfect image to jump over to the miss the mark because I think the juxtaposition of this is a solid use of Photoshop for the fantasy effect. Um, the next one is going to show you a very not solid use of Photoshop for a fantasy effect. Okay, so this image is just bad in my opinion. Um, I think they were trying. I think this is a real landscape. The This probably isn't. The lighting doesn't necessarily match up. It's... This one's one where it's like Photoshop is real, it's showing, and ugh, doesn't look good. A lot of these, you're going to have to balance the fact that these are not somebody's like looking back 50-year portfolio of their best 10 images. So yeah, there is real stuff that isn't totally awesome. They're doing it for Instagram. They need to put it out on a regular schedule. And, you know, the the playing around or the funner side of it Sometimes that doesn't come off as much as some of some of the seriously like thought out stuff. Here's another one. I don't know if it's collaboration or what it is. This one's bad. Um, I mean, we all know how we felt about Will Smith as a 3D genie, and I don't think this image does anything to change how we feel about Will Smith as a 3D genie. Um, and she's just slapped on it. And yeah, this one's not great in my opinion. Okay, so I mentioned the boat. Uh, the boat problem, this is the image I was talking about where there's a boat uh, in the background and it takes away. So I think that part of the problem was in the last image they were looking, the person was looking away and I think if he was positioned to be looking out, this would work. But uh, the fact that his face is in here, I think it pulls away. And so you end up with a really empty side over here with not a whole lot going on. And you end up with this guy uh, being very detailed and a lot going on. So I think if it was switched and he was looking away uh, and the sun was kind of coming through and giving some separation to the birds and everything, I think this one could have worked. It just doesn't quite work for me, even on the fashion side. I don't know if you can see it on your guys' screen, but this has a very like bathroom robe texture, like carpety look to it. And it just, just doesn't translate great in my opinion. We've got this image, which is... This one hurts me. Um, the hat is off kilter. The hat is way too much. There's no separation between her and this building. The building is busy and her outfit's busy and it's blocky. Uh, and there just isn't a whole lot that works in this image for me. Um, yeah, I just, it, this, one's a, this one's a tough one for me. And I think on top of that, focus got missed here. In the, in the quest to make this all like really, really clean. And I think when you're a subject, you have to realize that she is your subject in a scene. Um, so blurring her for the sake of getting the background uh, doesn't quite work. This one's just another one where the Photoshopping just didn't nail it. Um, I think this is probably a fake sky replacement or if it was this scene with this crazy like sunset, this just comes off to me as a green screen. This one really bums me out that it didn't work. Um, the actual, like it's not Photoshopped. The deer there, the scene is absolutely beautiful. Um, there's just a lot that could have happened with this that made it really, really good. Uh, the biggest problem is I think you have too many things competing. You've got deer butt in the corner competing. Um, you've got deer over here that just is kind of wet and soggy and sad looking. Um, you've got deer back here and maybe a deer or a rock. Like this is just a mess, mess of stuff and it's hard to tell what it is. You've got a lot of shadow in here. So this one could have been a really, really cool scene for me. Um, the fact that it was ultra wide, it limits you because you can't take away certain things. And in a noisy environment like a forest, sometimes it's really, really nice to be able to creatively crop or creatively take certain aspects out of uh, an image. And unfortunately, they couldn't do that with this one. So we're up to the last miss the mark. And this one seems and feels like to me, it could have been done really well. Um, 
but it didn't quite get there. So there's just nothing that's making me happy in this image. The the burst of sun over here isn't making me happy. This this like overly yellow sky nuclear look isn't isn't uh like it almost has a po post apocalyptic vibe to it, but it's not grungy enough. So there just isn't anything in this image that I really really love. So this one kind of just it's just a hit, just, just missed the mark, just missed the mark. It's not a horrible photo. It's not an amazing photo. It just kind of missed the mark for me. Now, the strange is the, the category that I'm really excited about. Uh, a few of these images are probably a handful of my favorites, um, and they really stand out, this first one especially. Now, there's going to be something right off the bat with this first one that you'll notice. When you first see it, it looks like she's looking back at you. Um, the mask effect of that is fantastic in my opinion. Uh, I really like the way that they did this. I think this is one of their only nude type photos. Um, and I think it was really, really well done. Uh, I think the, the things that she is wearing or visibly wearing add to the photo. They don't detract. You know, the bracelet is making a good statement. The mask is making an awesome statement. And even with all the grunge and everything going on here, they had a good exposure on it. She's exposed well. Even this, I kind of like that it's not his arm. It's more like interactive of their hand being locked together. Uh, I like the way that the curls fall. I like the way that the mask fits and kind of shapes a face out of the back of her hair. Uh, I really, really like this one. There's not anything really too bad I have to say. Now, this is the strange category. So there was a series of Dolly-inspired uh, images that they did. Um, I don't know if they're in collaboration with somebody or what, but they uh, exist. I don't know how I feel about them. <laughs> they are strange, and that's about all I can say. This one is a really cool departure for me. It's not fully different but it's in a tight confined space. And instead of looking towards the sky or looking towards a, a grand expansive landscape, there's a whole lot packed into this small wide angle space. One, she's getting fitted for a suit, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's different than the dresses and the flowy and bathing suits and yada, yada, yada. So it's a, it's a fashion departure, but it also is one of the first ones where like, I feel like she's being interacted with. I know that there's images in here where she's, you know, there's other subjects like playing a part, but I don't feel like in the one with the guy on the boat looking at the camera, he pulled away. I don't think any of the people that are extras in this image pull away. This guy's like looking over here, not pulling away, not distracting. This lady is not distracting. She's interacting with the image. She's coming in. She's doing a measurement. So the physicality involves the model. I like the mirroring of whatever, I don't know if this is the suit she's getting fitted for um, or how, what they're like, there's not enough detail to like tell the whole story. And that's, what's kind of cool about this one. Um, yeah. So that was a good departure. It fits into the strange because I just don't feel like it fits their normal stuff. And I really, really like this one. So the reason I included this in The Strange is this is one of the only ones that I saw where she is actually physically against an object. Um, and to me, this one just says, I'm exhausted. Like, this series is exhausting. I cannot imagine how much it must take to do hundreds and hundreds of these images and still come up with creative ways to do it or be able to advance. I'm sure that that's a, a daunting mental task that they have to deal with on a regular basis. So we're gonna end the strange here and we're gonna move on to the grand and wrap this up. This image, I just really like it. They have some images that just crush it as far as having a grand scheme or a grand feel to them. I think the mirroring of you know, the main subject here is awesome. I think the modern and the old is great. And I think even the fact that her dress is kind of old school Cinderella, like big flowy, but also still kind of sleek and modern. I just, I think that they did a really good job. Um, I mean, even her jewelry kind of mimics the domes. I just, yeah, they just, they did a really, there's a lot of, there's a lot of details in these images that because I think they go on Instagram or because they're so quickly looked through, 
I think there's a lot of details that are really thought out by these guys that you just never take the time to slow down and really, really appreciate. This is another one. The detailing in the floor is amazing. The detailing in the ceiling is amazing. The detailing on the walls are amazing. So with all those things in combination, you would think that there is no possible way that they can pick an outfit that is not going to compete or clash with this scene. And in my opinion, they couldn't have picked a better outfit or pulled this one off uh, in a better way. Even her hair is incredibly good. Um, love this image as a whole. I think it's awesome. Even her nail colors don't compete. So it's just a, this is, this is a wild balance that they pulled off on this one. On to the next one. This one is fantastic. Uh, I love the domes. I love the artwork in it. I don't think that her outfit competes with it. It's another one that's just really, really well done. And once again, like you see circles and dome shaped objects in her jewelry, just kind of attesting to some of the thought. And even with the uh, hair being a lot plainer than the last one, I still think it works fine. And I know in the world of travel photography and, and everything, a lot of these images are, you've seen them, they're done, you know, you have an ability to get jaded with travel stuff, especially in the past few years. I think this one's really, really phenomenal. Um, when you think about these in a cluster instead of just, oh, here's an Instagram model and an Instagram photographer, taking those images and looking at them outside of the social constructs that are going on at the same time allows you to actually look at the images and, and see if there's any value in them. So one thing you're going to notice as I scroll through and wrap up on, on these guys' stuff is that even though they have one model in one position, every outfit is thought out. There's not a whole lot of repeating. You would think with the constraint of you have a wide angle lens and you have to shoot with one person holding your hand that all of these images would just start to feel like the same image. And I think they do a fantastic job of that not being the case. 